Hello, everyone. Hello. It's Good. Maddie Mads from Spectrum Art. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning here in sunny Florida. Maybe it's still nighttime over there. It could be. Not sure. But either way, hello, everyone. We are back, and today we are going to be making what? Photo slides. Photo slides. So we found these really great um, digital print uh, on Etsy, and it gave us the idea to actually go ahead and make some great um, slides. Now, of course, you don't necessarily need to have a digital kit. There are tons of printables out there um, for free online that you can actually um, utilize and you can go ahead and print out and create on your own. You could also just do one yourself and make a template. And that's kind of what we've mm -hmm. done here. And I'll show you that in a second. And um, also there's one, um, it's a little bit different, but kind of the same idea that um, Tracy Fox uh, made, it's called the uh, specimen set. And you guys are gonna be looking out for that video upcoming because um, the digital is only like five bucks. So we are definitely gonna go ahead and get our hands on that. And thank you, we're gonna get our hands on that and, uh, and make you some of those. You like this one, mm -hmm. the pink one? Yeah, it's pretty, I like that little pearl. Oh, you can't really see it, it's too dark. Hang on, let me bring up the light cute little pearl see aha uh -huh. all right so let's go ahead and get back on track and talk about what we're going to be making today we're going to need uh, some kind of a slide right we're going to need some glue glue we're going to need doesn't matter any kind of glue right yeah white glue is fine or you can also use mm -hmm. glue sticks glue sticks absolutely we're going to need a pair of scissors and Fancy scissors. these were actually a gift from uh, our lovely Edie, Edie correct. And uh, so we love these Edie, thank you so much. And um, if you're going to back them up, these I printed on cardstock, so that's efficient. And plus we're gonna be layering them with some images. But, uh, and the, this kit does come with um, some images as well and some words, so kinda cool. But if you wish to also back them up even more, like yeah. to make what yeah. template? Mm -hmm. You could use, um, like this is the, Find. this is, yeah, the back of one of Madison's notebooks that she was done with. So of course we're going to save some of this yumminess right here, right? To use on a project, but we had the Ooh, rest. I, mm -hmm. well, I like it. I like this whole thing. So. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're going to save that to glue onto something. Cause that's always fun. But I used the rest of the, um, yeah, to go ahead and back up some of these images. And now it's like super thick. It's almost like chipboard. Um, and this is a great way of just making one and being able to trace around mm -hmm. it on any of your decorative paper or any paper, even book pages, uh, to make your own slides. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the images, mm -hmm. right? So we gathered up some of our images because guess what? We all have these, oops, sorry about the glare. See, that's why I had that over there. We all have these books, books right, that we like to purchase, we find, um, and we don't use them. So we gathered up some that we thought might be a good one. Here's a little cat book that I bought from an auction, obviously, from one of our friends. And not only does it have great quotes, but it also has great images. Some of them are probably not going to be the right fit, like those. But if you look for the ones that are horizontal, look at that. Ah, uh, too cute. So that could be one. Oh, look at I this like that cutie patootie cat. We could definitely use something like that. And again, once you cut your template, this will help, help to, measure. Yeah, to measure, to make sure that you're gonna stay within frame. So this was an idea that we had for this little oh, book. Oh, good cutie. I know, then what else did we get? We got this one because you, know, you might wanna do some florals in there. Look at that, huh? Or um, what else? Oh, look, some woodland creatures. How cute would that bunny or that mouse or what is that? A porcupine. Be oh, like look a, at the deer. No, no, look like mm. a rat. It does. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's also some maps. So you can even do a collage by doing a map and then doing an animal in front of it. So lots of um, cute images here. What else did you get? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. And this one we also got at an auction. But look at these great little images that we could just... Out. collage and glue on there what else oh and yeah we got this old reader book that's right this is an old reader reminds me of um dick and jane right mm. and it's got great images like a book of that. Mm -hmm. we still have a few of these mm -hmm. 
You could do that owl down there. What else could we do? Oh, look at this lady. Oh, yeah, that kid. So you see, I mean, look. Oh, sorry, honey. Sorry, sorry in my hand. Yeah, it's fine. Look at all these great little images that you can pull out of these books. So just go through your books. Um, see what you've got. Uh, here's another one. This is one of my favorites to use if you've watched us. Encyclopedia. Yes. This, uh, the Golden Home and High School Encyclopedia is one of my favorite books to use. It's got everything in here in case you haven't seen this. It's got everything from, you know, um, just pictures to maps to great text. The pages are super yummy and yellow. I mean, look at all these great pictures. Um, look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that ship too. Yeah, look at that. See? So many great um, pictures to go ahead and just use from this book right here. It's got flowers. It's got birds. I just saw a bird. Oh, my goodness. Look at this car. Look how cute. It's a Ford oh. 1903. Oh. It's so, an old wagon. Okay. What, um, what's another idea? You can also print out your own images, right? So if you um, go online, you could probably search uh, and, oh, sorry about that glare, do a search and be able to find some great images that uh, you can actually, you know, make to fit inside of this frame. And again, or, this is just my template, so it's kind of um, not too pretty, but I was just playing with it. I've got some more over here, but we are going to go ahead and get busy. We're going to go ahead and cut these out. And then we're going to go ahead and get to creating, and we'll come back and also show, show you, you the complete stuff. Yeah, show you what we came up with, okay? And now we get to hang out together. Sit back, grab your favorite drink, whether it's your coffee, your tea, your ice water, and perhaps your supplies. And together we'll go ahead and either create some slides or perhaps you have something on your table that you've already been working on and that's perfectly fine. We'd love for you to keep us company and we love to keep you company. So let's craft along together. Along the way we're going to have of course some fun music to listen to and relax along um, as well as some stories. So make sure you stay tuned um, for those stories that we're going to be sharing with you. Now. The sides here on the inside, uh, you want to be kind of careful cutting that inside window. Uh, it does get a little bit uh, close to the edge, so you want to make sure that you take your time doing that. Taking that extra minute to go around um, your little slide on the inside window as well as the outside edge can really make a big difference. Um, those white sides are not very appealing. Uh, so using that marker and taking that extra minute can make a big difference on your projects, especially when once they are mounted or uh, perhaps being part of a layout on a page. So that extra minute can really make a big impact on your projects. This is one of our favorite parts of crafting, just having a good time, taking our time, and having fun choosing images. We love looking for images and getting all kinds of ideas and inspiration and just, you know, starting to see how things will come to fruition. While we do actually continue to look for images, I'd like to read you a short story. A long time ago, there lived a very kind-hearted king. He was very fond of birds and had a huge bird sanctuary in his kingdom. He had never harmed any bird or animal, and he hated those who did. One day, the king wanted to see the falcons fly, 
and he had heard that one of those falcons could fly a great height at a very high speed. The bird trainer let the falcon out of the enclosure. It flew very high, very quickly, and came down to the enclosure within minutes. The king was quite surprised and rewarded the bird trainer with a handful of gold coins. He inquired about the other falcon. The bird trainer stated with regret that the other falcon had not moved even a step from day one and he just sat on a branch. The trainer also added that he had tried everything that he could but still failed to make the bird move. The king consoled him and told him not to worry that he would bring someone with more experience to help him train the other falcon. Soon, the king announced that he needed someone to make the falcon move and fly. Hearing this announcement, an old man reached the king's palace and assured him that he would make the bird fly like the other one. The king asked the head trainer to take the old man to the sanctuary to train the falcon. He said that he would visit him the very next day to see if there was any change. The next day, the king was very surprised to see the other bird fly just like the first one. It flew to great heights and rapid speeds. The king was elated and he gifted the old man a handful of gold coins. Then the king asked the old man what he had actually done to make the bird fly in just one day. The old man simply replied, I just cut the branch of the tree where the falcon used to sit. Well, isn't that true of many of us? We have wings to fly. We might even know how to fly, but we just sit there. I love the moral of the story. It reminds us that we are capable of amazing things, right? If we just step out into that ledge to get out of that comfort zone. Did you like that story? I've got another one. This one is called the crack pot. A water bearer in India had two large pots. Each of them hung on the ends of a pole that he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of a long walk from the stream to the house, the crack pot arrived only half full. For two years, this went on daily with the bear delivering only one and a half pots full of water to his house. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, perfect for which it was made. But the crack pot was ashamed of its own imperfections and miserable that it was only able to accomplish only half of what it had been made to do. Next, we decided to use these really cute butterfly images and to play with the idea of actually creating an acetate window so it actually looks like a real slide. Um, and so what we did was we used our ATC or playing card pockets, and you can buy these at um, any store, and simply open them up in order to create uh, a larger area to um, be able to glue those down and create that illusion of a real slide. Let's continue on with our story. After two years of what I perceived to be a bitter failure, the pot spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream, and it said, I am ashamed of myself, and I want to apologize to you. I have been able to deliver only half of my load, all because of this crack on the side. It causes the water to leak out all the way back to the house. 
because of my flaws, you have to do all of this work and you don't even get your full value for your efforts, the poor pot said. The bear said to the pot, did you notice that there were flowers on your side of the path, but not on the other pot side? Well, that's because I have always known about your flaw and I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. Every day while we walk back, you've watered them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be this beauty to grace the house. What a great story. What do you think about it? Have you known somebody who might be a cracked, leaky pot? Perhaps it's you, perhaps it's me, right? But there's value to every single one of us, despite our flaws. Even in our art, we see this. We take what others might discard, and we repurpose it, and we upcycle it, whether it's a piece of furniture, a box, uh, maybe some books that have seen better days, um, stuff that might end up in the trash otherwise or in the recycling bin, and we give it a new life. I think flawed things sometimes are the best things in life. It's what makes uh, us all different. Um, and I definitely, of course, uh, appreciate uh, different people, uh, different walks, different uh, thoughts, different ideas, uh, even different abilities. It is what makes us all special. How boring would it be if we were all the same, if we all liked the same crafts, if we all did the same things? Uh, I mean, there would be no need for color or, you know, uh, some folks love different styles and, you know, love to craft with florals or maybe butterflies. Yet others, you know, like, you know, grunge or steampunk, um, everyone's got a favorite. And I think that that's what makes art so special. It's, it's a diversity. And even in our communities and in YouTube, it's all that great diversity that, that just together we learn from one another. Uh, so by all means, if you are a crackpot, I know I am, you know, enjoy it. Know that there you have something to offer and that there is beauty in every single one of us. Because you know what? God made us this way and he loves us just as we are. The digital kit included some blank, um, well, kind of like off-white and tan, um, slides as well and of course we were not about to throw anything away so we played around with the idea of what to do with them and finally settled on using stamps so great way to go ahead and break out your inks break out your stamps and also be able to use any paper that's in your stash it could be decorative paper um, some book pages this uh, stamp set particular was giving us a really tough time um, as far as stamping for whatever the reason was. It just didn't want to stamp. I don't know if the stamp has gotten old. It's brand new. It's a brand new set. Um, so if you see right there, I'm using a nail file and that is just to scuff up that stamp and that helped a little bit with this one. Um, the car image, uh, later on, we had to do the same thing. We ended up having to scuff it up with the file to get the um, ink to, um, you know, stick. And the boat did not work as well. So I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys. Has that ever happened to you? Why does it happen? It's, it's a rubber stamp, so it's not an acrylic. It's rubber. Um, one of those red stamps but I'd love to hear if you've seen this happen to stamps that you've never used uh, and do you use anything uh, particular please leave it down in the comments because you know what I'm sure we're not the only ones that have discovered this do stamps grow old um, could the rubber have hardened uh, does it need conditioning again not sure let us know If you guys know us, you'd know our love for napkins. 
uh, it's kind of funny how actually the love started with Madison. She started um, really wanting napkins and I don't know if she was watching videos or what happened, but all of a sudden she passed it on to me and I've taken it to a whole new level. <laughs> so here we're using uh, two different napkins uh, that had great images and, um, and of course, as you guys know, I love napkins because of that texture and color and images that they bring. Um, you don't have to break out stamps, you don't have to do any of that. It's all basically all in the napkin. The texture, the images, the colors, it's easy, easy peasy, no mess. So I've got another story for you guys and this one is called Pancakes. Six-year-old Dan decided one Saturday morning to fix his parents' pancakes. He found a big bowl and spoon. He pulled a chair to the counter, opened the cupboard, and pulled out the heavy flour canister, spilling it on the floor. Well, he scooped some of the flour and put it into the bowl with his hands. He mixed in some or most of the cup of milk and he added some sugar but behind he left a flowery trail all on the floor and now his kitten had left a few tracks in it himself. Dan was covered with flour and getting frustrated. He wanted this to be something very good for mom and dad but it was getting very bad. He didn't know what to do next, whether he, to put it all in the oven or the stove, and he didn't know how the stove even worked. Suddenly he saw his kitten licking from the bowl of mix and reached to push her away, knocking the egg carton onto the floor. Frantically, he tried to clean up those monumental mess but he slipped on an egg. Now his pajamas were white and sticky. Just then, he saw Dad standing at the door. Big crocodile tears welled up in Dan's eyes. All he'd wanted to do was something good, but he made a terrible mess. He was sure a scolding was coming for sure. Maybe even a spanking but his father just watched him. Then walking through the mess, he picked up his crying son, hugged him, and loved him, getting his own pajamas white and sticky in the process. That's how God deals with us. We try to do something good in life, but it turns into a mess at times. Sometimes even our marriages get all sticky, or we might insult a friend. Maybe we can't stand our job uh, or our health goes sour. Sometimes we just stand there in tears because we can't think of anything else to do. That's when God picks us up and loves us and forgives us, even though some of us are a mess. But just because we mess up, we can't stop trying. Sooner or later, we'll get it right. And then, guess what? We'll be glad we tried. Our next story is titled, The Golden Windows. It is by Laura E. Richards. And it is actually featured in her book titled, the Pig Brother and Other Fable and Stories. Don't you love that title, The Pig Brother? I mean, seriously, I definitely want to read that, right? Uh, it was actually written back in 1881, and it is part morality tale, part philosophy, and part science lesson, all rolled into one. Before I get started on this next um set of slides we decided to use decorative paper right scrapbooking paper and as I mentioned this is a great opportunity to use those uh, scraps that you might have just uh, piled up 
uh, this page right here actually got us thinking and you will see something come out of that later on in the video uh, but right now we're just looking for some cute images and pages let's get on with our story all day long the little boy worked hard in the field and in the barn and in the shed for his people were poor farmers and could not pay a workman but at sunset there came an hour that was all his own for his father had given it to him then the boy would go up to the hill and look across at the other hill that rose some miles away. On this far hill stood a house with windows of clear gold and diamonds. They shone and blazed so that it made the boy wink to look at them. But after a while, the people in the house put up shutters, as it seemed, and then it looked like any common farmhouse. Another great thing to use is your images. So here we got three cute little eggs that we decided to fussy cut in order to add and create a little bit of a layered look on our slides. The boys supposed they did this because it was supper time and then he would go into his house and have a supper of bread and milk and so to bed. One day, the boy's father called him and said, You have been a good boy and have earned a holiday. Take this day for your own, but remember that God gave it and try to learn something good. The boy thanked his father and kissed his mother. Then he put a piece of bread in his pocket and started off to find the house with the golden windows. It was a pleasant walk. His bare feet made marks on white dust, and when he looked back, the footprints seemed to be following him and making company for him. His shadow, too, kept beside him and would dance or run with him as he pleased, so it was very cheerful. By and by he felt hungry, and he sat down by the brown brook that ran through the hedge by the roadside, and ate his bread and drank the clear water. Then he scattered the crumbs for the birds, as his mother had taught him to do, and he went on his way. After a long time he came to a high green hill, and when he had climbed the hill, there was the house on the top, but it seemed that the shutters were up, for he could not see the golden windows. He came up to the house, and then he could well have wept, for the windows were of clear glass, like any others, and there was no gold anywhere about them. A woman came to the door and looked kindly at the boy and asked him what he wanted. I saw the golden windows from our hilltop, he said, and I came to see them, but now they are only glass. The woman shook her head and laughed. We are poor farming people, she said, and are not likely to have gold about our windows, but glass is better to see through. She bade the boy sit down on the broad stone step at the door and brought him a cup of milk and a cake and bade him rest. Then she called her daughter, a child of his own age, and nodded kindly at the two and went back to her work. The little girl was barefooted like himself and wore a brown cotton gown but her hair was golden like the windows he had seen, and her eyes were blue like the sky at noon. She led the boy about the farm and showed him her black calf with a white star on its forehead. And he told her about his own at home, which was red like a chestnut with four white feet. 
Then when they had eaten an apple together, and so had become friends, the boy asked her about the golden windows. The little girl nodded and said she knew all about them, only he had mistaken the house. You have come the wrong way, she said. Come with me, and I'll show you the house with the golden windows, and then you will see for yourself. They went to a knoll that rose behind the farmhouse. And as they went, the little girl told them that the golden windows could only be seen at a certain hour, about sunset. Yes, I know that, said the boy. When they reached the top of the knoll, the girl turned and pointed. And there on a hill far away stood a house with windows of clear golden diamonds, just as he, has, as he had seen them. And when they looked again, the boy saw that it was his own home. Then he told the little girl that he must go, and he gave her his best pebble, the white one with the red band that he had carried for a year in his pocket. And she gave him three horse chestnuts, one red like satin, one spotted, and one white like milk. He kissed her and promised to come again but he did not tell her what he had learned. And so he went back down the hill and the little girl stood in the sunset light and watched him. The way home was long and it was dark before the boy reached his father's house, but the lamplight and firelight shone through the windows, making them almost as bright as what he had seen from the hilltop. And when he opened the door, his mother came to kiss him and his little sister ran to throw her arms around his neck, and his father looked up and smiled from his seat by the fire. Have you had a good day? asked his mother. Yes, the boy had a very good day. And what have you learned? Have you learned anything? asked his father. Yes, said the boy. I have learned that our house has windows of gold and diamonds. The End what a great moral, huh? Another great story. And it's so interesting to think that this was written by a woman, Laura, and that it was written, you know, over a hundred years ago. You can just almost see those, you know, I can, I can see those windows shining, you know, in the sun at sunset and just looking like they're made out of gold and diamonds. What a great sight that would be, right? Sometimes we get so busy that we don't actually take time to see things. So that was a great story. At least I thought so. You guys give me some feedback. Tell me, what do you guys think? Was that a good one? Can you imagine someone actually sitting over 100 years ago, um, you know, maybe with a quill uh, and some ink and actually penning that story? What a great image. Maybe she was looking out of her own window. Maybe it was something she had experienced, right, in her lifetime. The digital kit included these um, really cute words and, and phrases. Um, most of the slides I kept without using the words, even though I absolutely love them. I think they really lend um, a great touch to the slides themselves. Uh, but the reason why I kept them clear or clean without the labels is because, well, maybe we'll decide later on that we want it in a particular journal or that we want to put a date on it or a specific sentiment. So we just kept our options open. If you recall, I had mentioned that we had found inspiration in that one um, 
scrapbook page from that paper pack, uh, when we saw those dictionary words, we were like, oh, what a great idea to find images and text uh, using an old dictionary. So we broke out our dictionary and uh, Madison went through and we picked some images um, that we found interesting, of course, most of the ones that I loved. She didn't care for, so, you know, hey, you know, to each their own. And each artist sees things that uh, that they like, like these chopsticks here. She thought they were just absolutely fascinating. And I do have to agree. I love how she sees things so differently than I do at times. You guys ready for one more story? I've got one more before it's time to go. Believe it or not, we have spent over 30 minutes together. Of course, when you guys watch these videos, you're watching um, 30, 40 minutes. But as you can tell from nails, jewelry, probably um, outfits, this has been a video that uh, has taken us over a week to actually do. So there is a lot and a long process that goes into making the videos. And I just want to thank all of you so much for the great feedback, positive and negative, um, as well as all the support and uh, the understanding that we are growing and we are learning as we uh, go on this journey together. So uh, we hope that you are enjoying these stories and, and again, love to hear from you guys what you think. Does it help uh, to have stories to craft along to as you're actually watching a tutorial video? Uh, we'd love to know. But let's get on to our last story. This one is called The Sagacious Monkey and the Boar. It was actually written in 1908. And it is actually um, from a collection, if I'm not mistaken, of Japanese um, folk stories. So let's read along. Long, long ago, there lived in the province of Shishin in Japan, a traveling monkey man who earned his living by taking round a monkey and showing off the animal's tricks. One evening, the man came home in a very bad temper and told his wife to send for the butcher the next morning. The wife was bewildered and asked the husband, Why do you wish me to send for the butcher? It's no use taking the monkey around any longer. He's too old and forgets his tricks. I beat him with a stick, all I know how, but he won't dance properly. I must now sell him to the butcher and make what money I can out of him. There is nothing else to be done. Oh my, the story's already starting to scare me. Okay, let's read on. The woman felt very sorry for the poor animal and pleaded for her husband to spare the monkey. But, he pleading, but her pleading was all in vain. The man was determined to sell him to the butcher. Now the monkey was in the next room and overheard every word of the conversation. He, so he soon understood that he would be killed and he said to himself, Barbarous indeed is my master. Here I have served him faithfully for years, and instead of allowing me the end of my days comfortably and in peace, he is going to let me be cut up by the butcher, and my poor body is to be roasted and stewed and eaten? Woe is me! What am I to do? Ah, a bright thought had struck him. There is, I know, a wild boar living in the forest nearby. I have often heard tell of his wisdom. Perhaps if I go to him and tell him the strait that I am in, he will give me counsel. I will go and try. There was no time to lose. The monkey slipped out of the house and ran as quickly as he could to the forest to find the boar. The boar was at home, and the monkey began his tale of woe at once. Good boar, I have heard of your excellent wisdom. 
I am in great trouble. You alone can help me. I have grown old in the service of my master, and because I cannot dance properly, now he intends to sell me to the butcher. What do you advise me to do? I know how clever you are. The boar was pleased at the flattery and determined to help the monkey. He thought for a little while and then said, Hasn't your master a baby? Oh my, this story's starting to scare me. Oh yes, said the monkey. He has one infant son. Doesn't it lie by the door in the morning when your mistress begins the workday? Well, I will come around early, and when I see the opportunity, I will seize the child and run off with it. What then? said the monkey. Yes, I want to know too. What then? Why, the mother will be in a tremendous scare, and before your master and mistress know what to do, you must run after me and rescue the child and take it home safely to the parents. And you will see how the butcher comes. When the butcher comes, they won't have the heart to sell you. I have to interrupt the story really quickly just to tell you uh, that here what we're doing is we've decided to actually mount um, the slides on three sides. We've added the glue and mounted them on cardstock in order to make them into pockets. And let's continue on. The monkey thanked the board many times and then went home. He did not sleep much that night, as you can imagine, for thinking of the morrow. His life depended on whether the boar's plan succeeded or not. He was the first up, waiting anxiously for what was to happen. It seemed to him a very long time before his master's wife began to move about and open the shutters to let the light of day. Then all happened as the boar had planned. The mother placed her child near the porch as usual, while she tidied up the house and got her breakfast ready. The child was screening happily in the morning sunlight, dabbing on the mats at the play of light and shadow. Suddenly, there was a noise in the porch and a loud cry from the child. The mother ran out to the kitchen, from the kitchen to the spot, only just in time to see the boar disappearing through the gate with the child in its clutch. She flung at her arms with a loud cry in despair and rushed into the inner room where her husband was still sleeping soundly. He sat up slowly and rubbed his eyes, then crossly demanded what his wife was making all that noise about. By the time that the man was alive as to what had happened, and they both got outside the gate, the boar had got well away but they saw the monkey running after the thief as hard as his legs would carry him. I hate to leave you with a cliffhanger, but I will continue as soon as we are done uh, wrapping up. I almost timed it perfectly, but I am short by a few seconds. So we will be right back with the rest of our story. And here we have yeah. Seven, yeah, seven completed projects. Projects, yeah, with the exact same slides. So we were able to uh, play around with stuff that we had in the studio. Uh, the first thing we did, of course, was we went ahead and used the images that came with the printable. Digital um, kit. Right, with the digi kit, you're right. And so those were phenomenal. And again, you might even have some magazines or something that resembles that. Uh, we also went ahead and after being inspired by the... Um, Paper, paper we went ahead and did um some dictionary pages that madison picked some images these are kind of cool this one's funny the chopsticks so these turned out really really cute. cute and it's a great way to go ahead and use what you already have in your stash then we did um the uh decorative paper right the yeah. scrapbooking paper with yep. the fussy cut images and these turned out so cute as well and then we did the printed images, right? And we added yeah, the plastic, glossy. yeah, the plastic. Um, yeah, well, Madison and I were discussing that you could totally use glossy accents too, you know, if you wanted to. And you can even make these into a pocket so you can actually slide um, different images in and out of them. So lots of possibilities. Also, uh -huh. You can also use your own photo images. 
that is true you could use your family images by all means uh, we also went ahead and did napkins and I love of course the texture of napkins always have always it will so textured. yeah it's very textured it almost has like a crackle effect which I just adore I wish this camera would focus so you guys can see that texture in there it's so cool and then um, stamps. yep we did some stamped images um, and finally of course we started with those book pages. book pages and so here they are they're all done we've got some kitty ones Madison did some um, maps she picked some Winnie the Pooh which was kind of cool because we ended up collaging them you see that so they're almost like um, they almost have this 3d effect um, Wait, try bring it up close. I'm trying to get it to focus and it just won't I don't know if I should turn off the autofocus or leave it on it just seems to well what happens is by the way this way it's so dark in here one of our lights actually two of our overhead lights have gone out which I'm gonna have to ask my lovely husband to go ahead and uh, fix because it's a pretty high ceiling so I can't do it but two of our lights yeah went out so um, I need to go ahead and have those that's replaced fun. and I think it that's why um, it's so dark and it's kind of playing with that um with the ability to focus but anyway there you go we uh, have like, uh -huh, which was your favorite stamps the stamps yeah is it because of the airplane yeah i bet it is well anything travel related you like mm. i think you'll like the which one do you think one. which one the botanical one hmm. you mean with the napkins the the flowers yeah. Ah, that's a tough choice if I had to choose. Well, what would you guys choose? Do you think the vintage photos? Do you think the dictionary paper? The book pages. The, yeah, the decorative um, scrapbooking paper with fussy cut images, butterflies with the plastic film. I mean, which ones would you try? And you never know. We might send you a set. So leave a comment down below yeah. and let us know which one, we'll you, um, you know, you'd like. We might pick a winner. The napkins. Um, stamps. The stamps or the books. Uh, if I had to choose... I like the book. The stamps. Well, there's... Oh, that's tough because I love butterflies. I definitely love um, book bears. images. I am a sucker for any... Oh, those pool bears are cute. Or... Um, napkins. I'm probably going to go with napkins. I think you're right, Madison. I just love napkins. I love their texture. I love everything about them. The I amount like, of images and okay. colors. I like this one. Oh, yeah, the starfish. He's cute. Cool. So, anyway, we hope you guys you have a it. lot of ideas now. We hope that you've enjoyed it. Don't forget that you can go ahead and find a template, make your own, grab everything you family have. photos. Yes, within your reach, your family photos, your magazines, books, anything whatsoever. And um, create a whole bunch of these, have them ready, use them as themes. You saw that we actually made some into pockets. Um, and these, any of these are ready to be made into pockets. All we have to do is mount, you know, another piece on the back. We can make them into paper clips. Uh, you can do all journals. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mini, oh, mini journals. Can you guys imagine? Oh, Madison, that is awesome. A front and a back cover. And then, oh, stitch some paper in between. Look at, she's just genius. So tons, tons of ideas. Thank you so much Thank for joining for us. Thank you for Yes. We hope that you give us a thumbs up. And subscribe uh, so that you can, you know, see ring more content. Yeah, ring that bell so we can bring you more videos. You guys have a blessed day. Bye. Bye. Fear not, I will not leave you hanging without the ending. I do apologize for that really strange cutaway and segue. And anyway, basically the video ended and we were not done with our story. So let's just go ahead and pick it right back up. Uh, and when we left off, the monkey basically came back with the child safely in his arms. So let's pick up from there. There, said the wife, this is the animal you want to kill? If the monkey hadn't been here, we should have lost our child forever. You are right, wife, for once, said the man as he carried the child into the house. You may send the butcher back when he comes. And now give us all good breakfast and the monkey too. When the butcher arrived, he was sent away with an order for some boar's meat for the evening dinner. Oh my. And the monkey was petted and lived the rest of his days in peace. Nor 
Did his master ever strike him again? The end. Oh my, <laughs> that was interesting. I think that poor boar got it at the end though. So I don't know how fair that was, but it's very interesting to see how different cultures um, write different um, stories and different morals. So we hope you guys have liked it. We hope that uh, that you're enjoying this uh you know, new thought and idea and process of incorporating trivia and stories into our videos. I think it just makes the time that much more pleasant that we spend together, not to mention that hopefully we all walk away a little bit wiser, right? Once again, thank you so much, everyone. And you guys have a blessed day.